Are we ready? Are we rolling? Yes. Good. Rolling. Good. Because I need to talk to you guys about hot peppers and how hot they can be. That's a very hot look, Yolanda. For Is sure. this not hot? These are my Horatio Kane glasses. Looks like I'm about to cake something that's too hot to handle. All right, so I am making a hot pepper. Oh, I've got to be honest and tell you this. At first, because we know I like to torture myself, I was actually gonna make two hot peppers. I basically started with two round cakes that I removed from their pans, leveled, and then I cut each one in half into two semicircles and stacked one half on top of the other. And then I was gonna carve two peppers. But as I started carving, I decided I didn't really like where it was going. So I then started to carve the second cake and push them together and I just kept carving until I had the shape of a hot pepper. I don't know what to say. I mean, part of me thinks now, if I knew I was gonna make a giant pepper, I would have done this like I did giant carrots. So I would have like baked round cakes that some of them were wider and then got smaller and then built it that way because it's very similar to the shape of a carrot. Uh, but I didn't know. I thought I was gonna make smaller life-size peppers and I changed my mind. So I hope you can forgive me. So pretty much to make a hot pepper, you know, it's a little wider at the top. It gets really narrow and pointy at the bottom. Um, but peppers come in all different shapes and sizes. So it's good to have a model. Peppers are far easier to work with than watermelons. Let's add another one to the list. I feel like the list is like every single fruit and vegetable is good and then watermelon. You would expect peppers to be very problematic. I mean, they're You not... would. She's like hot and sultry and she's very like feisty. I thought that they would act, you know, feisty, but they didn't. So now what I want to do is pull all the parts of the cake apart because remember I stacked cakes on top of each other. So I'm going to pull each layer off one another and simple syrup all the parts of the giant hot pepper. The pepper, once you cut into the pepper, it just gets hotter. And sometimes they're deceiving, right? Have you ever had the kind of hot pepper that like when it first hits your tongue, you're like, oh, I got this. And then like two seconds in, your mouth is on fire. Yes, I know, I hate that. I hate See? that. See, now I'm going to fill between my layers with Italian meringue buttercream. I'm gonna stack the layers back on top of one another and then I'm gonna crumb coat the entire pepper. It's interesting too sometimes when you make cakes that are, you know, rounded all the way around because it just feels like it's wobbling and moving around as you're working with it. So if that happens at any point, you know, you might want to chill your cake just for a while just to make it easier to work with. So the inside, I want it to look like a deep rich chocolate cake with the white buttercream. But Along the outside, I don't want to see a line of white buttercream between the skin of the pepper and the cake. So therefore, I dyed my buttercream red and crumb coated with that color. Now that the crumb coat is chilled, I'm going to ice my cake once again in red buttercream. As I was icing, I used my invention in some parts to smooth the cake. Because it's not a perfect sphere, but it is rounded. So sometimes I find the invention really helps when I'm smoothing buttercream on something of this nature, rather than my spatula, which ends up creating a lot of sort of ridges. Now I'm gonna place, once I'm happy with the, I feel like my glasses are crooked, are they? No. This is very serious, I don't want to look like a fool. So. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to start to roll out some of my red fondant. You always want to measure your cake, you know, measure the length, measure the circumference, and this way you can roll your fondant larger than the cake itself and know that you have enough to drape over the cake. And at this point, I want to smooth it onto the cake. I'm mainly using my hands because a smoother, while it's great for a lot of cakes, with a cake like this, it doesn't necessarily help because what you want to do is smooth the fondant on the surface and then really tuck it under the pepper the whole way along. It's time to add, I don't know what you would call it, but like veins, not really veins, but there's like texture in a pepper. To make the veins, I'm using sculpting tools. You can also use your fingertips. You want it to look really subtle and natural. There's sort of those indents here and there. They're not perfectly spaced. And then even between the indents, it's almost like there's 
ripples in the skin, like a pepper's not perfectly smooth. This is not a fake plastic pepper. This is a real pepper. They get a bit wrinkly. How much time did you spend examining a pepper for this? A lot. I had to go to like four stores to find hot, these hot peppers because I knew there are tons of types of hot peppers, but this is the type I wanted to make. I found them in the end. Now I'm going to pop this cake in the fridge, let the fondant set up, and I'm going to work on my giant stem. You with the stems again. All, I'm telling you, my whole life is stems and nubs. <laughs> That's going to be my next book. <laughs> Stems and nubs, no actual cake. I'm using green gum paste to create my stem. I want to roll it out into a tube and then I'm gonna put, you can use a lollipop stick or a dowel. You'll wanna insert that into the tube of fondant because it needs support. The pepper is lying down, so you can't just stick a long piece of gum paste on it and expect it to stand in midair. It's going to need something to help hold it there. I'm going to use a veining tool to texture my stem. Uh, the stem tends to be even more wrinkly or dry than the pepper, I guess because the peppers are cut off the plant and the stem starts to dry out or die first before the pepper. Now I'm going to switch to painting. So I'm gonna start by painting the cake portion or the pepper portion of the cake. For this, I'm going to use a couple of different reds and I'm gonna have a little bit of orange on the side just in case. I'm mixing my food coloring with clear food grade alcohol. And then what I did is I really just painted the whole body of the pepper one color and near the tip at the end, I added in a little bit of a darker red. The model I had, the model I hired, that's what she looked like. The pepper is just simple, right? It's like, I'm here, I'm hot and I'm red. What's her name? Wait, we haven't named her. We need a P name. Or should, should it be an H name? Like Hot Holly. She's so unbothered by all the other vegetables I've caked because she knows she's the hottest, literally. What is that, a pumpkin? <laughs> Please. That pumpkin has nothing on me. It has to be a like an aggressive name, like Zena. It could be Zena. <laughs> Zena? Like, yeah. wasn't Zena some type of warrior? Oh, is Zena like your type of woman? Yeah. So the stem is a little more intense to paint because it sort of has layers. Start by dry brushing the stem with some green color dust and some citrine colored dust, which basically looks like a greenish yellow. Then I started to add in some cappuccino color dust. I did it dry and then I decided to add um, clear food grid alcohol to that to just get some darker lines in the stem because as the stem dries out, it starts to turn more from green to brown, which is what I'm looking for. Then I worked in uh, some white food coloring because I just wanted to sort of highlight the top of the stem. The stem is often, it's not often, the stem is where the vegetable gets cut off the plant. So when usually when you cut a stem open, the inside is lighter than the outside. Beatrix is a pepper name, I find. Beatrix? Yeah. Because there's all these, like, there's a sharp X in it, which reminds oh. me of peppers. <laughs> and in her official logo, the X is two peppers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, and now I can add the stem back into the cake. So I want that dowel to go into the cake and for my stem to stay upright. Vivian. Or like, you're right, there's something about like X's and V's and Z's. Chengis, you got any votes? I, I can't think of anything. Okay, thank you for contributing. <laughs> Guys, if you know the name of this hot, feisty pepper, leave it below. What is her name? We must name her. I'm like, I was so happy with this cake. So happy. It's like effective and aggressive, just like a hot pepper. We always have upcoming new classes in our Bake You Happy Live tutorial series. So if you're interested in learning something new and taking on a baking project, click the link in the description below and check out the classes.
Thanks for watching, guys. And if you need more cakes, click here. They're not as hot as this hot pepper, but they're good.